Hello everyone, this is Rachel with the Bullitt County Public Library, and first I wanted to thank you for being interested in February's Adult Craft Takeout, which is a winter scene embroidery. On the screen right now, you're going to see everything included in your kit. First, we have a 4-inch embroidery hoop, which opens and closes using the small screw at the top. Next, we have two different sized embroidery needles, a larger one and a smaller one. And as you can see, each of these needles has a larger eye, so it'll be easier for you to thread. Next up, we have a square of pre-patterned muslin fabric, which includes the image of the winter scene that you're going to be creating with this kit. And lastly, we have our embroidery floss, which includes brown for the tree and the roof, dark rose for decoration, purple for the snow, and gray for the smoke. The only other thing included in your kit that you do not see on your screen now is a supplemental pamphlet, which has time-stamped references to the individual stitches we cover in this video so that you can complete this project in segments and reference those segments rather than having to watch the whole thing through each time. Now that that's covered, we can begin our project. The first thing we have to do is to get the fabric on the embroidery hoop. We do this by loosening the screw at the top until there is enough give for us to fully separate the two hoops. Once they are separated, you can set the outer hoop to the side and pick up your fabric. I fast forward a little bit here so you don't have to see the whole thing. So there they're separated. There's the larger and the smaller. And as you begin to position your fabric, you're going to realize that there is a little bit of the pattern that is going to be too big for the hoop. You can decide which section you'd like to cut off. I make the decision to cut off a portion of the smoke so that I can get the majority of the tree visible in my scene. But you can make whatever decision you like. This is, this is your kit. So here I'm messing around. And once you have it the way you like it, you're going to take the outer hoop and gently press it down so that the fabric is securely placed between the two hoops, just like so. And then when that's done and you feel it's secure, you're going to tighten the screw in the opposite direction as before, and then you will have successfully set up your embroidery hoop. The next thing that you're going to have to do is to pick which size needle you prefer. I personally selected the smaller of the two needles, but as you work with your project and you get more comfortable, you can switch between the two and see which one you like. The first of our flosses that we're going to be using today is brown for the tree and the roof. And the really cool thing about floss is that all of your embroidery floss is going to be six stranded and you can use as few or as many strands as you like. Today though, and every time we're going to thread our needle during this project, you're going to be using three strands. As you look right here, you're going to find that you have three two-foot strands of embroidery floss. And at this time, we're only going to be using one. So you can pull one of them away from the other and set the two to the side for right now. So as we zoom in, you can see a little bit of those six strands that I'm talking about. And what you're really going to want to do here is to separate this into two, three strand sections like so and pull them apart. You can see that I'm running my fingers down the floss to try and make sure it doesn't tangle. It might take a little bit more work or less work for you. And then once they are separated, I'm gonna place one of them to the side for later use. And I'm just gonna wrap it around my fingers. And I'm going to use the other one here to thread my needle. I 
I end up fast forwarding here because it's difficult for everyone to thread a needle and I didn't want you all to have to watch me struggle. But what you have to do is you have to get the floss through the eye. And so that's why getting large eyed needles was so important. And so right here I show you the process of me pulling it through. And so now you have working thread and then a little bit of a tail. And that's what we want. We want to have that tail on the thread. Now we can start hand embroidering. So you can tell that you can see the pattern through the back and we're gonna use that to find our starting point. So find the place you wanna start and the motion of hand embroidering is to go from the back through to the front. So pick the part that you wanna start at and stick your needle through the fabric. I zoom in so you can see what I'm doing here. There we go. I'm going from the back to the front. And so now you're gonna put the needle in the fabric to hold it in place. And we're gonna make a series of small knots at the end of this floss so it won't pull back through. I usually try to make about three in the same place. So that's what I'm doing on the screen now. And there's my series of knots. And now that that's done, you can finish pulling the rest of your floss through to the front. And then you can give it a little tug to make sure it's secure, and it is. And now you will know that your knot is gonna stay. What we're going to do now is you're gonna go up one stitch length and then you're going to push through the fabric with the needle through to the back of the hoop. Grab it from the other side and pull your floss all the way through and that is your starting stitch. Now we're going to do what is called the back stitch. This is a very common stitch used when embroidering and we're going to be using it quite a bit today. So with your needle, go up the pattern tree one more stitch length and come back from the back through to the front. We're now going to complete this stitch by going down right next to or in the same hole as our previous stitch. You're gonna pull the floss tight and it's gonna show you that it's a full stitch and that is the back stitch. I immediately have a mess up right here. You'll be able to see that in a second. I go back up to do another stitch and as I'm going back down beside the previous stitch, I show you my placement so that you can see how close I am to the previous stitch. But as I'm pulling, you'll see that I'm not careful enough and I let the floss get tangled just like that. So this causes a knot in the thread on the top of my piece that I had to pick out. I really recommend taking your time with this, especially if this is one of your first pieces that you're creating so that you don't run into something like that. But now I'm just going to fast forward for the next little bit to show you what my embroidery process looks like. When I get to the branch right here, I turn my hoop 90 degrees, so I'm still continuing in the same orientation as before. Then right here at the tip of the branch, I get a little closer here to the camera to show you that I start the top row of stitches very close to the bottom row so that I can give it that pointed look at the branch. And then I just continue on.
Now I cut forward to when I'm at the end of my floss. Very similar to when we first started stitching, I'm now going to place several small knots as close to the muslin as I can so that the floss can't come undone and undo my stitches. One thing that I personally like to do is hold the floss right against my last stitch using my needle because I think that lets me get as close as possible. I'm going to show you right here how I do that. And then I just press against it and pull with my other hand. And then you're just going to repeat this one or two more times. And after you're done, you can snip the extra amount of floss at the back so that you don't have anything hanging off. We're going to pick back up in the same spot now and using the other strand of three strand floss, we're going to thread the needle again. So now that we have our needle threaded, we're going to come back up right beside the place where the floss ran out. And then once you do that, we're going to do the exact same thing as we did when we started. We're going to tie a few knots at the bottom of the floss so that it will anchor in place. And then we're going to continue on with the same stitches like before. I fast forward again to show you what to do when you have to get from one side of the tree to the other. It's very easy. All you have to do is to come up one stitch length below the hoop's edge on the other side of the tree's outline. And because you switched sides while on the back side of the hoop, you'll see here that whenever you complete the stitch, you see where you transferred on the back, but you can't see anything on the front. And so now you've gotten to the other side and you can continue on like before one more time. Now you're going to see me complete the last two stitches to finish my tree's outline. Now that that's done, what we have left to do with the brown floss is to fill in these little leaf shapes and the lines on the tree. I'm going to start with the lines on the trunk next. And I'm going to do this with however many back stitches I need to cover the visible pattern lines. So we're going to place the needle on the back side of the fabric beside the tree trunk and I come up through the back and go back down beside but not through the outline stitch. For the first one it looks like I just needed a single stitch. And this is the same for the second and the third tree trunk lines.
whenever we get to this fourth line though, I realize that it's a little bit wide. So in order to cover it up, I'm going to place several back stitches right on top of each other to give it more width and to cover that visible pattern underneath it. And then when you've gotten the hang of it, you can continue on with the rest of the lines to complete the trunk. The last thing that we have to do with the tree is to fill in these leaf shapes that you can see on most of the branches. This is also going to be done using the back stitch. So just pick where you want to start and just try and create the shape in the pattern. For these, I went for a triangle shape and then I just filled in that shape with a couple of tiny stitches. You can leave it as just the outline of the triangle though, if that's what you prefer. This is your piece. You can make it however you want. And then just continue doing those steps until you have all of those leaf shapes. I went ahead and cut to when I've completed those leaves. And now the last thing that we have to do with our brown floss is to complete the roof. We are going to stitch longer parallel lines on the roof of this house to give the illusion of wooden planks. And then we're also going to try and continue those straight lines in the small visible section on the other side of the chimney right there. First, we're going to outline the three sides of the roof in an open square shape. Then we're going to try and create a parallel line with the stitch on the top of the roof that you just created. If you start doing this and you find that it's too difficult, you can also just do small stitches across. Again, it's whatever you want to do. So in my opinion, this is the most difficult part of the whole project because long straight lines can be really tricky sometimes. So after that, you're just going to come down a little bit on the chimney line and then you're going to try and trace over to where you think it will create the straightest line again. And make sure that you pull these lines tight so that you can keep them taut and they look like roof lines. And then just repeat this process through the entire roof. Again, if you just don't get the hang of this, you can also just Instead of one long line, you can create several small lines. It'll still have the same effect. The other side is going to be a little bit more difficult as well because we have a smaller workspace. I started with one line to show the slope of the roof, and then I'm going to try and recreate lines that look similar to the other side of the roof that I just did. As you're watching right here, I complete one line and then you're going to see that I don't like this first line that I attempt. I just don't like the way it sits and I look at it for a second and then I decide to undo it. So to undo the line, the only thing you have to do is to go back through the fabric in the, in, in the exact same hole that you went through and then come back up the front side again and that will undo your stitch. And then you'll be able to try again. And the second go around, I liked it much better, so I'm able to move on. 
Whenever you have as many lines as you think can fit on the other side of the roof, you can tie off the floss like you did previously and we can move on to the next color. So the next color that we're going to use is the dark rose for the bobbles on the tree. And then we're also going to be using a new stitch. So separate your floss into two three-stranded sections again and then thread your needle. And then we're going to start with a French knot. So to do the French knot, first you're going to hold your working thread a few inches from the fabric tightly in your non-needle hand. Be sure to hold it taut, this is important. Then, using the needle, wrap the floss around the tip of the needle two to three times. Make sure you continue to hold that working thread taut so it doesn't slip off, and reinsert the needle into the fabric directly beside, but not into the same hole that you came up through. At the same time, keep holding that tension in your non-needle hand till the floss moves down the needle into a little knot against the fabric. As you fully pull the needle and thread through, you'll be left with a cute little intentional knot that you can use in your design. These can be really tricky to get the hang of, but once you get them down, I think they can add something really special to a piece. They're one of my favorite things to do, and I'm going to show you how to do this process one more time. So hold the working thread in your non-needle hand, wrap the thread around the needle a few times. Here I hold it with my middle finger so it doesn't slip off. And then insert the needle into the fabric right beside the hole, but not through the same hole that we came up through. And then hold the floss taut in your non-needle hand. And as you're pulling, then once it's nearly all the way through, you can let the floss go and you'll have that French knot, just like that. I'm gonna show you one more time at this speed. We go up through the fabric, hold a few inches with your non-needle hand, wrap the needle two to three times, Then, making sure everything is taut, go down very close to where you came up. And then you can let go when you're almost to the end of your floss. Now I'm going to fast forward a little here so that you can see in general how I do them. You'll notice that whenever I'm not recording, I place them against the table or my lap because I just find that easier. And then I also decide at the last minute to add a bobble to this last branch even though there isn't a place on the pattern for one because I think it's just going to look nice. So if you want to do that, feel free to add it there too. So the last thing that we're going to do with this rose thread is to fill in the door on the house. We're just going to stitch little lines right on top of each other to fill in the space. This is very similar to what we did with the lines on the tree trunk. Once you have that completed to your liking, you can tie off your floss like we have before, and then we can move on. We're now going to switch to another color floss. We're going to switch to the purple floss for snow. 
we're going to be following these lines and we're going to be using two rows of stem stitches right on top of each other to give the desired effect. So thread your needle and then I'll teach you how to do the stem stitch. So a stem stitch is similar to the back stitch with one big difference. So come up through the back and then go forward one stitch length. We're going to make sure that our working thread is always beneath our needle while using this stitch. And instead of pulling all the way through like you usually do with the back stitch, we're gonna go ahead and come up in the middle between the two points while the thread is still out. Now go forward another stitch length, same as before. And this time, when you come up from the back, we're gonna come up right beside the end of the last stitch that we completed. Just like that. Doing this pattern creates sort of a roped effect instead of just a single line. I included this next section to show you what to do if you mess up like I did. I didn't pay enough attention to what side of the fabric my needle and thread was on and I ended up getting caught. To undo this, I just have to go back down through the fabric in the exact same spot that I mistakenly came up through. So right back down got a little caught there so just tug it and then now my thread and my needle is back in working order so I'm gonna now go forward one stitch length again and then same as before I'm gonna come up right beside my last completed stitch I zoom in here so you can see what I mean Then to skip the tree trunk, we need to get to the back side of the fabric. So to do that, you're going to go right down beside the trunk again. Like so. And then come up again on the other side of the tree and continue on just like at the edge of the embroidery hoop. You'll be able to continue on in this pattern with this stem stitch. Now I've completed this first line, and now I'm going to show you how to get from the one line to the next. So we need to get back to the back of the fabric again. So go to the back of the fabric at the edge of the hoop, and then go to the intersection of these lines. And then come up to the front right there. That's where you'll push through to the fabric and then just start your stem stitch again and continue on on that line until you have that row done. Now I'm going to create the exact same stitch beneath my previous line so that we have a double row of purple stem stitches. If you like the look of just one row, feel free to leave it as it is. I just like the look of two, so that's why I'm doing it. I zoom in here so you can see how close I'm getting to my previous row. 
which is directly underneath it, but not through the floss. The important thing is to not go through the floss so that you get things caught. But then I just completed the exact same motions. The last thing that we're going to do is to use the purple embroidery floss to create an outline on these windows. I'm going to create that outline by just making a square. Now that I have that square, I'm going to create a vertical and a horizontal line to make the look of a window pane. This is completely optional, it's just a little something extra that I wanted to do on my windows. And I'm going to zoom in again so you can see what that looks like. Here is the square. And then here is the window with the horizontal and vertical lines. And then we're going to recreate that exact same thing on the other window. Here is a zoomed in image of what that looks like on my piece. And then when that's completed, we will be done with the purple embroidery floss. The last step in our project now is to fill in this smoke. This is going to be done using the variegated purple floss. And variegated just means that it's not the same color all the way through. And also that two different people might get two different looking strands of floss. So once you thread it, we're going to come up right where the chimney meets the floss and then just use stitches to follow these pattern lines. Following curves can sometimes be a little bit tricky and so I recommend to use smaller stitches so that you can follow those patterns. Here is a zoom in of what my first row of stitches looks like in my smoke. And now I'm just going to keep stitching beside this line until I have the area filled in. I went ahead and I zoomed in to show you what this looks like now that I have filled in this area. And I'm also going to show you how I navigate this curve. My needle movements right here are going to be the path that I'm going to try and replicate with my floss lines. So you get to watch me fast forward a little bit while I do this. And now I'm over here on this last part of the smoke. I'm going to try and follow that line now. And when filling in this smoke, I think it's really just an organic process and you should just go however you feel. I completed a couple of these while trying to create this video and my smoke looked different each time. It just depended on the way my lines went and how I was feeling that day. So if your smoke ends up looking different, that's okay. 
But now I'm showing you how I'm going to finish this last little curve that I add in because I wanted a little bit more movement. And then I also just complete a couple of last stitches to fill in any white space that I have. And now that I have that section filled in, I am done. I'm going to pull the fabric taut so that I can see how everything looks. And then zoom in so you can see all of the details. There's the house, the tree, you can see the bobbles a little bit. And now I'm going to take the fabric off of the embroidery hoop. Once you get that loosened, you can separate the larger and smaller hoops, and then you will have your fabric. And then you'll have completed this hand embroidery project. There are a lot of things you can do with this now. You can hang it on the wall just as it is. You can put it in a frame. You can give it as a gift, you can turn it into jewelry, put it on a pillow. The options are honestly endless. Thank you so much for coming along on this journey with me. I hope you enjoyed this and got some new skills, or if you already know how to embroider, you had a good time with this project. One more time, my name is Rachel with the Bullitt County Public Library, and thank you again for participating in February's Adult Craft Takeout. I hope to see you again in the future. Check out our Facebook and website for the other crafts that we have done in this series.